Hello. Uh, good afternoon or morning to everybody, uh, depending on where you're situated. Um, my name is Matthew Robin and I'm responsible for lighting application at uh, Philips Lighting, uh, based in Eindhoven. And over the next uh, 30 to 35 minutes, I cover with you the subject of lights as a, as a selling tool uh, in retail, and from the point of view of increasing footfall uh, and increasing the time that shoppers spend in retail spaces, and of course, all of that leading, hopefully, to sales. To um, and we're going to structure this is actually in uh, six parts. We'll start with uh, looking at some, some, some fundamentals and uh, how light can influence the eye brain system. Well, that will be explained. And then we're going to look at it from a, a functional uh, point of view the role of light in terms of attracting, engaging, and converting customers using light. We will then uh, briefly touch on the uh, cognitive and uh, emotional role that, that light can play in uh, retail spaces before reviewing some of the uh, academic uh, research that uh, has been undertaken. We will also look at some real life uh, proof points. The presentation has been accredited, uh, assessed and accredited by the Royal Institute of British Architects. So if you're a member of that architectural association, you will be able to get uh, continuous professional development points uh, for, for your time with us uh, today. Uh, and also, if you're a member of the AIA in North America, you will be able to do uh, exactly the same. If you have any questions at all, uh, please put them uh, on the right-hand side. You'll see there's a uh, the possibility to, to, to pose uh, questions there. Um, and what we will do is we'll, we'll be able to field some of those questions at the end of the presentation. But in any case, we will record all the questions and we will come back to you. If you ask a question, we will come back to you uh, afterwards. So just before we uh, kick off, I'd actually like to just start off with a, uh, a question to you, just to kind of get an idea of uh, what you think about the, the subject of, uh, of, of light in retail and, and how it can contribute uh, to, to business uh, in, 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 in shopping environments. So I'm going to open a poll now uh, and just give you, you know, something like 20 seconds. It's really uh, just a yes or no uh, question. Just please ask. I'll open the poll now. And it is, you know, do you believe light be a contributor to retail sales? So we'll just give you, uh, you know, 10 or 20 seconds, something like that, to, uh, to, to answer. Then I'll close the poll and verbally give you, give you the results. A few more wait seconds. There's quite a few more people uh, still, still answering. Another five, six seconds or so. Very good, good one. I'm going to I'm going to close the poll now. Great. Okay, so the uh, poll is uh, closing. Okay, and uh, in fact, uh, we have a overwhelming, uh, overwhelming response. Uh, basically, everybody, uh, as far as I can see, yeah, pretty well everybody, except for the people who didn't answer, said say the answer yes. So anyway, that's a, perhaps you know, an interesting way to, to start this. Okay, so, so this presentation is uh, very much uh, focused at uh, architects and also uh, end users. And what we're not really going to do in this presentation is we're not going to, although we'll refer to a lot of projects, we're not going to sort of describe a lot of uh, projects uh, in terms of you know, the, the fabulous retail projects that there are all around the world so much. This presentation is really all about is this. the max seven minutes that on average shoppers spend in a retail space. And this, this figure comes from uh, mobile research, uh, collating quite a number of uh, academic research papers, and it's kind of the average, if you like, of uh, all of the studies. And this is really the time that, uh, on average, uh, people in retail spaces. So what means is the retailers, of course, have a very limited time to uh, attract and engage and convert uh, potential buyers. 
more interesting if you add to that is what if you can get shoppers to uh, to the engagement stage then 80% of those people then go on to make uh, a, a purchase we're also going to refer a lot to the research uh, which has been cover carried out uh, amongst other universities, uh, the University of Brussels, where they've done a lot of work uh, really trying to isolate the role that light can play in the retail uh, space. But before we uh, kind of really get into the presentation, I'll just start with a few fundamentals. And to start this is to really think about the, the eye-brain system. Here a presentation of lighting, you'll probably see a cross section of the human eye. But of course, it's much more than that. Um, one of the leaders uh, in research is uh, somebody called Samir Zeki at University College London. And he's written uh, a book called A Vision of the Brain, which is really worth uh, Googling. Uh, you can even, uh, of course, buy a copy on, uh, on Amazon. And one of the things uh, that he refers to there is that we receive as humans approximately 11 million bits of information per second. We can only process about 200 bits of information per second. Which is why it is absolutely critical to make sure that the visual environment, in fact, whatever the visual environment is, should be ordered as well as possible so people can make sense of that. And if you link that back to where we started with the, the seven minutes that people are spend in retail spaces, you can see why that becomes uh, so so important. So to illustrate that a little bit uh, with non-retail uh, examples, this is a, a very well-known um, uh, visual illusion called the, the Herman Grid, and it works uh, because the rods and the cones in the uh, back of the eye are competing together. Uh, and then the six back to the what was called the visual cortex, situated at the back of the brain, uh, gets mixed up, gets uh, confused. And there are quite a number of these, if you, if you Google them on, uh, on the internet. This is another one called uh, the cafe wall illusion, where uh, if, you, if you think about it for a second, you'll, you'll be able to see that actually all the ones there are horizontal, but of course they you know, appear, appear uh, quite, uh, quite wonky uh, and out of place. So what that means then uh, in the uh, retail environment. So you have uh, uh, actually a pretty typical store, this time trying to sell a clothing. Short, we can see there are clothes there, and we can also see pretty quickly that they have sale on. But the space hasn't been, been ordered, and there's a lot more that, that the shop could do to uh, help the make sense of that space, perhaps highlight certain areas, perhaps draw the shopper back to a certain other parts of uh, parts of the store, so that's what we're going to look at in this next part of the presentation. Really, the functional role of light in terms of attracting, engaging, and converting customers uh, during that short time that they spend in uh, retail spaces. So we we all know that the art is drawn to brightness, and if you if you study light, uh, then this is one of the first things, of course, that you will, will uh, look at. We all know this. But the sort of thing that gets talked about a lot less is that it's also drawn to darkness. And it's that relationship between, between light and dark which is uh, so interesting. And I think we can draw inspiration from the world of theatre as some of the great uh, theatrical lighting designers, such as, for example, Peter Brook, Another book you'd like to Google called The Empty Space, um, which really deals with this subject about the relationship, the power um, between light and darkness. And of course, when we talk about retail environments, then you know, the link between you know, theatre and retail environments is, is pretty direct. And some techniques, which we won't discuss today, such as using theatre lighting techniques, such as key lights, fill lights, back lights, so a three-dimensional approach to to uh, theatrical lighting, or if you want to add a fourth dimension, background lighting can be directly used in retail environments. It becomes uh, essential when we consider uh, shops like this, 
uh, retail spaces like this, where in this case there's a lot of com competition with daylight. Uh, and so in terms of the way your, your eye, eye brain system is, is adapted, then it's not exactly encouraged perhaps to, to go into, into that place. However, here, in terms of encouraging people to enter a space, so uh, attracting people, so this is what we're talking at the moment, really attracting people at least to, to enter your retail uh, space. Here there's no doubt in this uh, wonderful project by uh, Tim Hunter Design in New York where the entrance to the store is. That's the first part, really getting people, of course, into, into your store. Then the second part, of course, is then really is about encouraging people to move through. And amongst uh, other examples is a situation where they found it was very, very difficult to, to get people to move up that uh, flight of stairs to explore what was going on upstairs. And of course, the question between the interior design and light has solved that problem. I can go asking the question immediately, so how is it possible to isolate light as a benefit here? And we will answer that question directly uh, later on. Here's an example um, where we talked about light and darkness. Fabulous example by uh, the well-known uh, designer, Jan Casali, where they really played in a very strong way between uh, using uh, light and, and shadow to create a very, very powerful effect to help uh, shoppers move through the space. So I looked at uh, you know, encouraging people to move into the store, help them to move through the store. Now we're just going to look a little bit about exploring the products themselves. And of course, there's a whole range of things we could talk about here. We're going to just cover two areas. The first is um, to be able to, to sort of experience, if you like, the, the, the texture of the product, which of course, or, or whatever the product is, which is of course directly uh, essential in uh, clothes uh, retailing. And here, you know, dark light, light, light and shadow uh, can play a very, very uh, strong role. The second part is uh, very talk, often talked about in a very general way in terms of uh, color rendering. We're going to take it a little bit more further than that. Um, LED technology here has a, a very uh, strong, increasingly strong role to, to play because it's easier to be able to choose the spectral output of the, from the LED source to what you're actually trying uh, to light. So how has that actually been used in practice? So here I'm going to refer to uh, a project with a major German retailer in conjunction with the uh, EHI Research Institute where they wanted to uh, increase sales of uh, certain li lines of uh, fruit and vegetables, in this case uh, tomatoes and bananas, and uh, used, uh, they, they found that the raw spectral output to use with those, those products and they may be able to mirror a direct increase in sales and also an increase in sales volume, a very significant increase in uh, sales volume as you can see uh, there on the slide. Okay, about kind of exploring the, the detail of the, of, of the product, being able to sort of experience uh, in it, it in the most optimal way. And what about, of course, the, the final uh, key part of the process, which is getting people to be to somewhere where they can actually pay. Uh, and here, of course, is an example where, uh, yeah, it, it can be very, very confusing to go uh, to actually, uh, once you've actually made your, your choice, that hard work has been done to engage the, 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 the customer, then, of course, you don't want to lose them at that, uh, at that point. And then, then we must just link us, ourselves back to where we started that 80% uh, of customers who become engaged then go on to make a purchase. So you certainly don't want to lose them at, uh, at this stage. Here's an example of where when somebody has uh, uh, experienced a the product, then yeah, they need some uh, fine advice, and then uh, there's no doubt about where, about where to pay. So before we move on to some of the uh, research that there is uh, around this, 
a uh, brief touch on the cognitive and the emotional role of light. Of course, uh, many well-known examples of uh, association uh, with, with with light. And when I saw this project for the first time, just the the image on our own, I, I thought, ah, oh, this is probably somewhere in uh, in New York. Only afterwards did I find that actually it's, it's a in a relatively small town in Germany with a population of about uh, 400,000 people. Because of the strong association that the designer, in this case the architect uh, Carsten Krebs, has used uh, being able to uh, create the create the effect of uh, kind of bringing Times Square to this uh, to this town in, uh, in in Germany. And about the emotional role of light. Here I'm going to use an example which has nothing at all to do with uh, retail. I'm actually going to refer to prisons in uh, in North America where I have used uh, for uh, people who are also sometimes very drunk people who are brought in in the hours of the morning. They're brought in, they have to be locked up uh, into in a, in a padded cell. They have found, uh, with research, that by washing the padded cells with a particular a tone of pink, and this this is called drunk tank pink, appropriately, that it has been able to calm prisoners down. Because a similar technique has been in prisons in, in Paris by the uh, well-known lighting designer Laurent Fachard, uh, based in uh, Lyon. And at the end of the 1990s, he was working with the uh, uh, French prison service where you were using a lot of yellow uh, so sodium light and uh, people who already have a lot of behavioral problems were very, very agitated by this. They found by changing this to a blue light, it was that a marked effect on uh, the, the prisoner's uh, behavior. Uh, now do a little review of uh, some of the research. Quite a lot of techniques, well-known techniques for being able to determine where shoppers' attention is drawn to. For example, eye tracking. It's also a great technique, but has the disadvantage that uh, all the people taking part in the research, they you know they they really know that they're taking part in the research. There's there's no way. Of, of avoiding it because they had to have this, this sort of strapped up with these uh, um, uh, vision uh, direction detecting uh, glasses. Another technique which is being increasingly used is with uh, real time tracking. For example, in Amsterdam airports, this, this technique has been used. And this, this, this you can see here, uh, is actually taken from above and it's used actually in Schiphol airports to be able to determine where people's attention is being drawn um, and then results have been able to be uh, extrapolated from that and look at the components which have then influenced influence that including uh, light. I think we would refer to some of the uh, great work that's gone on at uh, various universities including uh, PHL un University in Belgium and here they were able they they built a, a full scale mock up of a uh, grocery store uh, and were able to, to change the lighting conditions with uh, certain ranges of products repeated. So only the light conditions were, were the differentiating factor. As a result of that, they have been able to determine that light does influence a shopper's route and also the choice of uh, of products. So let's review a little bit where we are. We looked at some of the fundamentals. Uh, we then looked at light from a sort of a functional way in terms of getting people uh, into a store, helping them to in, uh, experience the space, helping them to experience products, and then all importantly, helping them to move towards where they can they, they can actually pay. How does this then really shape up when we look at real life uh, examples? So a couple of examples now. First example comes from a very well-known uh, makeup uh, brand, where uh, what they done is uh, people getting, uh, 
fashion the possibility to try that under different light, lighting scenes, for example, uh, under an evening a social atmosphere, under perhaps a, a atmosphere, or under an office uh, atmosphere. And this has really uh, played a role in the engagement process for for those uh, people trying out uh, trying out makeup. This then led a 10% uh, increase uh, in sales for this uh, for this uh, brand, in addition to uh, sales that they got from uh, other parts of the refurbishment, which were carried out at the same time. So they were able to separate this. So that there were anyway increased sales from the refurbishment, and then this 10% is in addition to to that. Just another example. Uh, this is a uh, um, a known uh, brand of uh, laundry, and uh, here, we have, you know, encouraging people to to spend more time uh, in a retail environment, and that's really what this this uh, project has managed to to achieve. They've been able to find they've been able to find that using actually a similar technique to what was used in the last example that I do, they've been able to show that uh, more than 30% extra time is spent in the store and the, the owner of, of this company is also convinced that that led to very uh, significant uh, sales. This is another example. This is the uh, Plus supermarket chain in the Netherlands. A very extensive study was undertaken over actually over two years um, with uh, the University of Hasselt's and also CQM research. And they a combination of techniques during that period, RFID tagging, which I referred to uh, earlier, uh, interviews. Uh, and it's also essential to point out that they used uh, to, to, to undertake this study. They took out all of these sort of seasonal variations, uh, like you know, Christmas periods, for example, and they were able to, uh, in, in, the, in the area where this was, uh, the study was undertaken, there were actually uh, two stores where one where the lighting was changed and where nothing was changed at all and they were able to determine uh, and reach uh, results where uh, 5% 5.5% oh, uh, additional sales has been achieved for, for this uh, retail so we're really now towards the end of this uh, webinar and so I've got a few uh, takeaways uh, for you, and then uh, hopefully we can open it up for some questions. So the first point is really to just remind ourselves that we can only assimilate uh, a relatively small amount of information in relation to what we actually receive each second. So then it's, from a, a design perspective, lighting included, uh, a tool to be able to order the space and make sense of it for all of the people who are spending short period of time actually in uh, in that store. I looked at that also in a very, you know, in a very sort of practical way in terms of attracting, engaging and converting customers, getting them into the store, um, encouraging them to move through the base uh, and to explore experienced products and then of course finding where to be able to find out where to pay very easily. We touched on the uh, cognitive and the emotional roles of, of light. Really, if all of this is, is brought together, uh, and of course, lighting is thought about at a early stage in the project, then it is possible to use light uh, to re as really a, a business tool. And this has been shown in some examples that I've uh, uh, run through with you today. So just uh, also to, just to remind uh, those of you perhaps joined a few minutes late, uh, this presentation has been uh, accredited for, for CD points, so if you're a member of uh, the RIBA uh, or the IA in uh, North America, you will be able to get uh, CPD uh, points for it. And now I'd like to just uh, have a look to see, let's, let's see now if there are any, uh, any, any questions there. We'll uh, try to get a little bit of a, a discussion going. Uh, so far it appears uh, there are no questions, but I will just the, jump to the last slide, um, which has got um, my 
minus, and then you can always send uh, you can always send an email to this email address, and we can uh, we will do our best to, to answer your question afterwards. I'm just okay. There's one question coming in here. So there was okay. There's uh, one question here. Was color change used? Um, okay, I don't know which uh, project. This this is referring to, but I, I will answer that question in a kind of a, a more general way. Um, the, the, the key is to, is to think about what is appropriate for that retail situation, and maybe color is appropriate. Maybe color is the right way to deal with it. Maybe, for example, it links to the brand. Maybe it links to a new uh, range of uh, products. So I asked, uh, you know, th so that that that's really the answer to the question. Um, in the case, if we take the plus supermarket case, if that's the one you're referring to, I don't know. Then uh, yes, the answer to so that is yes, and that that was used to fit with certain uh, brands of uh, certain products to encourage people to to move to that part of the, of the store. Okay, so we're going to have a look at another. Another question. Another interesting question here coming about the, the actual light levels. I think the answer to this is um, it all links back to where we started, which is about thinking about the adaptive states of, of the human brain system and thinking about actually what is appropriate for that situation. Remember, we showed that example of um, the, the weather competing with a lot of daylight. Well, there, obviously, you know, you need to do something uh, uh, particular to make sure, either with uh, areas of brightness or with higher light levels in some way, uh, to be because you know, you, you, it's a it's a fact that you have to in some way uh, c compete uh, with it to 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 raise attention. But it doesn't mean to say necessarily having a high light level uh, everywhere. So that's that's what this is about. Is about having the appropriate uh, amount of light. For the uh, situation. Okay, so we've got so one more, uh, one more question. I'm just reading through them. Just bear with me. Uh, um, another question here: What is the re what are the recommended uh, color temperatures for goods retailing as opposed to supermarket? But I kind of the answer to this one is a little bit like the the light level question. It what is uh, appropriate. Um, so let me give you one specific example. Imagine you want to sell uh, fresh, uh, products like fish, and warm color temperature. What what message will that give you? It will probably give you the message that the fish, even though it might be extremely fresh, uh, is actually uh, perhaps out of date. So in that particular example, it would probably be appropriate to use a cooler color temperature. So the answer to the question is just simply to, to really make a study with uh, you know, whoever's involved in, in, the, in the project to choose the appropriate color temperature for, for, that, for that project. So I haven't answered all, all of the questions. We've got uh, 30 or 40 uh, questions there. We will record all of them. And we will come back to all of the people who've asked uh, questions. Also, my uh, email address there. Please don't hesitate to send me an uh, email, and we will come back to you. On behalf of the uh, Phillips Lighting University, thank you very much indeed for your, for your time, and also really hope it's been useful. Thank you.